Greetings, everybody. I am Zeno, and I'm here to talk to you about the assault class in Modern Combat today. The assault class is very versatile. Therefore, there are many, many builds you can use with this class, and therefore, it seems to really be difficult to pinpoint what endorsement setup is the best to choose from. While I can't really certainly tell you which one is the best choice for everybody else or new players in general, but I can tell you that my preferred choice setup is all three of the endorsements being put into offensive capabilities. That is why I have gold rate of fire, silver accuracy, and bronze critical shots. This allows my main weapon, secondary weapon, to become a killing machine. On the other hand, I'm also paper thin. So what essentially I'm saying is that in order to play this class with no armor, you have to be really aware of your surroundings and the situation. Here we can see enemies pushing on the left and boss going through the middle just like, just like the usual. The main thing with using this class is, like, is that you want to be able to shoot en your enemies without being targeted. While I cannot say the skill level of these players in this game are impressive, but I can show you that by fighting my enemies around them, above them, or even behind them allows me to get a good jump on them and then destroy them before they can react. Of course, once they engage me front to front battle, as the assault's maneuverabilities, it is definitely without a doubt a good choice just to jump, charge back, and just approach the situation from another angle. And only after your charge is fully recovered, because if without it, you have a difficult time getting from point A to point B and fight, it, and fight safely. Playing a lot of games to me is like playing a chess game. What you essentially want to do is be able to see the entire view of the battle, figure out their moves, what they can do, what they cannot do, a few possibilities that the battle can result in. So perhaps like outcome A, outcome B, outcome C. Choose one of the outcomes that based on your experience is most likely to happen and then play it through. That's essentially how I play my games. Whenever I play the game, I need to know exactly where the bots are on the left side on the right side, where the enemies are, how much juice they have, and even kill streaks. Might be strange, but on the right top, I sometimes count how many times that player actually killed people in a row, and I also use the back button sometimes to check. Another important thing to add that the speed boost is really important to get, because the assault is really really good at getting away with his jump charges but with speed boost the assault is even faster and it never hurts to be fast. Moving fast means more mobility, harder for them to hit you and lastly getting from point A to point B is just so much faster. Also it makes your juice speed run super fast too so when you juice I can guarantee you that nobody can outrun you which is quite important sometimes when you do juice runs. The main point of playing Assault with no armor with full damage capabilities is to flank your enemies and make sure they're not shooting when you're shooting them. Because you cannot play a fair battle if you're both shooting each other. In other words, the only time I engage my enemies is when I have the fair advantage. And when the advantage is not mine, that is when I jump back and charge away. Sometimes the assault rifle will not be able to do enough damage and that is why you need to use the bomb with your assault rifle at the same time to make sure that you can do enough damage at that split second. And there are times where also I stay to fight enemies front to front battle even against the gunner but please be assured that it's not because that the assault rifle and the assault is 
just that much better than the gunner minigun but the fact that the player level was rather low so it may look a bit <laughs> like I can actually outshoot a gunner but no it's because of the player level so please understand part that part as you watch this video so if you play as a flanking assault with no armor and etc it can be said that as long as you're efficient with flanking your enemies skill recovery is not something you need to consider because you are working for your kills one step at a time and even with skill recovery at most the skill will be used once before you have to retreat or finish your kill and relocate another target and then think of another mind game another decision another plan and then follow up and execute the plan and see how how, how it goes it is always nice to keep your juice in case your plan does fail but sometimes it's also nice to use your juice to clear bots clear players or even clear turrets depending on what's the priority remember you can kill players all you want but the objective is to bring the money ball down and if you're not doing all three of the things I listed then you're not helping to win other optional quests such as building tours in your base is highly recommended only if it warrants you to do so example is well, such as right now all the bots on the right side is pushed on the left front lane and the bots on the left side is pushing the front lane so if I build any tours back into the base it won't really do much and if they do push us back that's probably a good time to build tours so you gotta decide here's a good example of an obvious sign that the gunner was going to use the ejector and I just throw a bomb while flying the air to try to avoid his ejector it's all really simple mind games really also when you make a decision you have to think of the risk as well sometimes you can just chase that player that escaped from my grabs or you can just stay back and just push bots sometimes you can push in and get two kills and risk your life and ruin your kill streak or you can play safe and just get one kill there's a lot of decisions to make when you're playing the armorless assault because with no armor you're you are quite limited to some things on the other hand you are there's also a lot of options open to you as well due to the fact that your firepower is extremely powerful there are, there are up and downs without a doubt depending what endorsement you use even gold armor silver rate of fire and bronze accuracy or a combination of those three endorsements being swapped around from gold silver or bronze remember that never engage an enemy unless the advantage is yours even if you do have the initial bomb throw on your target remember that once again you have to play when the advantage is yours not when the advantage is other player and that's essentially why a lot of players will find themselves getting killed but not know the reason why and that's another reason why I survive with no armor as I play the assault because I only engage when the advantage is mine one important thing to note that dying really doesn't help if you're dead you lose map control you lose your position on the map and that allows the enemies to push forward with no resistance at all also dying gives them kill streaks and gives them money which isn't as big of a deal unless they go extremely high in terms of kill streaks and then continue to flourish on that kill streak dying also resets your endorsements in other words that the gold speed pickups you got three times in a row will be gone so now you have to refine three gold speed pickups which might not be hard but if you find yourself getting killed 20 times per game that could be pretty hard once again I never engage unless I know the advantage is mine even after the bomb initial throw here's a good example of if I did build turrets earlier in my base the tank would just juice with that $500 and just ruin all the turrets we had which is one of the reasons why you only want to build level 1 rocket turrets unless your team is protecting it 
Also, there are three Toro nubs on the left and on the right. So if you just have one Toro nub built with a rocket, once it's destroyed, you have two more to build instantly to block the bots from pushing. So that will give you enough time for your grenade launcher to do splash damage on the bots and then eventually push them back. And then if they destroy the second one, there's always a third Toro nub to build. And then if the third Toro nub is built and destroyed, then the first one, hopefully by then, will be recovered and you can repeat this, re repeat this process of defense as you stall for time and hopefully it goes either goes to overtime mode or your team is here to help. One of the most important things to play with no armor assaults is efficiency. You have to make everything count. It can also be the one of the reasons why I, can, I find skill recovery not to be as useful on the assault for me compared to others because I use all my bombs, my charges, my flights to the utmost e efficient as I, as I can. There are definitely always room for improvements. So I will never ever stop improving. Because the minute I stop improving is the minute other people catches up to my skill level and that's the minute I will become a bad player. <laughs> but I've been doing this for several years. In fact, I, I've been playing with this mindset for six years which is probably one of the reasons why my gameplay perhaps will get better and better and sometimes we'll see new things that I thought of in the middle of battle that I did on the spot and then it worked out for the best. Other times it could just be luck but I'll let you be the judge of that. In a situation like this, you have, like I said, it's like a chess game. You have to decide what's important, what's the next move, how to checkmate your enemies, and then do what's most efficient within your abilities. There are a lot of things I do that are difficult for other new players or even other advanced players to do. So don't always compare yourself to me. Try to do what's best for you and what's within your capabilities that you can do to help your team. <coughs> In a desperate situation to play defense, I build a torn up on every single one of them hoping that the money ball will recover its shield and if you notice earlier on the right side when the jackpot was coming that's when the bot breached and that's because of my carelessness so I apologize for being careless you can't be, you can't be Superman all the time my friends but thankfully there's no competitive players or foreign players on other, other team dedicated to winning <laughs> If they really wanted to win, they just throw their body weights on the money ball and the money ball will surely go down, especially from assassins. So remember, always to engage enemies from above, around, behind, anywhere but the front. And then that charge usually is used for evasive purposes, although on occasions you will use it for killing purposes. I got level 3 charge because level 3 charge allows me to use it more often and then for the best reason there's an assassin on my butt all the time so I'd rather use <laughs> level 3 charge <laughs> try to show that assassin what it feels like to get lunch grapple a taste of their own medicine if you will I will say that level 2 charge and level 3 charge are both excellent skills <clears throat> a lot of people prefer level 2 charge and so do I in more competitive scenes but you have to realize that if you're playing heavy classes like gunners and tanks level 2 charge is not a good option in fact the problem, the reason is not because level 2 charge is not good but the fact that you don't want to get close to them is what it is so level 3 charge is used for mobility purposes <clears throat> once again on occasions where I see people I need to grapple I try to do it but sometimes it just does not turn out for the best and I, s I get pretty scared trying to be a hero against juice people but like I say based on my experience I know what's gonna come what's gonna happen so which is one of the reasons why I, I say I play this game like a chess game because essentially it's just trying to how to lock your enemies down and go f and finish finish the kill the another mindset is how to avoid the enemies at the appropriate times so you could come back and checkmate them let's let's think about it this way 
there's a queen on your king. So your king has to move back. And now they, you know, have a rook at another spot, and then they put another rook at another spot, and then you're checkmate and you're dead. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. So basically, a lot of my times when I play this game, I see myself as a queen in chess. Like the assault, extremely mobile, and then I'm deadly as well. Other classes are, you know, perhaps uh, bishops, pawns, etc. And then I play trying to dodge all of those players and their mind games and their capabilities and whatnot. It might be a bit difficult to explain, and that will be under the pro versus pro matchup category which I don't find myself to have enough time to talk about in this video. So perhaps in the future I'll do a video just on the assault with example pro uh, the assault versus the assault, assault versus support, etc. Although assault versus support might be really minimal. Here is a good example of why I want to grab that money because I'm just greedy like that. But I realize the danger and the, re the the danger and the reward is just not worth it. So I just just I just stay back and just play safe. Simple as that. This is almost overtime. So <clears throat> when it's almost overtime, it's a good time just to upgrade tours because it's all worth nothing, my friends. Once again, I will I would just like to touch on the level three charge. <clears throat> it is really good. Level three charge is actually really good. You just have to know to use it. So. If you use level 3 charge like you use level 2 charge, trust me, you're gonna get killed. <laughs> I, use, I use it just fine. <clears throat> and one more thing I want to talk about, no matter how much kills I get, if I don't win the game, then nothing matters. Although I still get fan mails and people cheering off for me <laughs> for just simply destroying people like a champ. But, like I say once again, you know, the money ball is the go. You can kill a million, million Chinese people and you still wouldn't be able to stop communism from taking over the country. And essentially, I guess in a way, I failed my country <laughs> because my country is still communism, although the uh, economy plans and such is more uh, capitalism. But that's another story. But anyway, I mean, all I want to really show you is that with no armor assault, you want to be able to flank enemies. You want to think your attacks through. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is think before you act if you did not learn anything from this video or what I was trying to tell you here, okay? Think before you act. Don't don't be stupid. Don't play stupid. Play to win. Think think of the whole picture, okay? So just just think of these things I said and just try it out. If it doesn't work, just do whatever you usually do. But remember, have fun and just go out and just have fun, you know? Alright, peace out, guys.